hi, this is Louis de Jaeger and I'm a landscape designer and I'm always very curious on why certain landscapes look certain ways and if you look behind me you see a sea of greenhouses. We're in Spain near Almeria and this is the highest concentrations of greenhouses in the world and I've been wondering why are these greenhouses here? I'm gonna tell you why. This is how this landscape used to look like. It's very dry, there's not much water. The only things you can grow here are grains, olives and grapes. This is just almost only mineral content. There is no humus in the soil, almost no organic matter. So if you want to build organic matter, one of the easiest things to do is to go and mulch it. And this is exactly what people in the 50s started to do. They were mulching it with all kinds of materials and also with plastic. And they saw that if they covered it with plastic, the moisture content stayed uh, higher. And that made it possible to really build this organic matter in the soil, which made it possible to grow all other kinds of uh, vegetables, such as tomatoes, melons, paprika, peppers, whatever. Um, they could sell locally but also could export to the northern European market and that is very profitable. So they decided to go in a certain direction and as you can see they kept going in the same direction and now we have this. The question of course if you only get around 200 millimeters of rain per year where do they get the water to water all their plants? And to answer that question, you have to go underground to age-old aquifers. And in these aquifers, it's full of water, so they are pumping out the water from these aquifers to water their plants in their greenhouses. Now, as anybody who knows a little bit of math or just logical thinking, if you take so much water that normally never falls here out of these age-old water containers underground where does the new water come from and the answer is well it goes down faster than the new water replenishes it so we are having a fantastic beautiful system in the view of production and i'm only talking about production now but we are depleting the groundwater and one day there will be no more groundwater left which will make these operations impossible again. So in the short term you have a lot of profit, in the long term your profit goes away. The other problem is if you take down, take away all this non-saline water and as you see behind me we are uh, near the coast, um, then the salty water will take its place. Why? Because the, the non-salty water gives this pressure to push away the salty water but if you take away all this water then the salt water will just get in and the soil will become very salty and we all know in salty soils it's impossible to grow uh, a lot of vegetables and fruit. Almost no vegetables and fruit we are eating today can grow in salty soil. Then we have another big problem and that is the plastic of course. There has been made a lot of documentaries, uh, photographs by journalists uh, showing that people are dumping it uh, in nature reserves, dumping it in the sea and uh, big sperm whales have um, died uh, and they have dissected them and they saw that they have uh, they had 17 kilograms of plastic in their stomachs which is not good for uh, any kind of animal so uh, plastic pollution is a very big issue and also the pesticides problem so a lot of pesticides they get in the soil um, the the nitrate levels of the fertilizer the chemical fertilizers uh, is rising so we have this cocktail of salinity coming from salt water in the sea. You have the pesticides making the soil toxic and you have the uh, chemical fertilizers that also uh, is not good for the soil. We have to uh, always look the two sides of the coin. So one side of the coin is very nice. Uh, you have tons of productions. Uh, almost all the tomatoes and uh, summer vegetables we eat in the winter, they come from here. So every time you eat this winter tomato, remember this place. Um, so it's good in a certain way you could say because it's so productive. But the bad side is that um, you have all these negative effects on the environment. Another positive uh, effect these greenhouses have, 
because you always have to look at both sides, is that they've been managing to uh, limit their pesticide residue, which is around four times lower than conventional um, agriculture. So in this way, they, are, uh, they have some improvements. Um, and another uh, good thing, uh, it's a funny thing, it's the albedo effect. So what happens if you have a surface of almost a million acres uh, of white surface, then the sun gets reflected, which will help the earth cool down. So uh, <laughs> these greenhouses in a, in a very perverse way are um, cooling the temperature here. So uh, the temperature of around this region has risen uh, in the last decades, but because of these uh, greenhouses, the temperature has fallen uh, in this region in the last decade. So uh, you always have to look at the balance, um, the good side, the bad side. The good side here is it also creates a lot of uh, employment. The bad side is um, there has been uh, incidents of people working here uh, with very low wages or even super super low wages that you could argue uh, if some people are working here in slavery, uh, s slavery or not. So um, nothing is black or white. You have to make your own decision uh, whether you want to support this kind of agriculture with every bite you take um, or not. Um, and let's see in uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years if places like this still exist This is Louis de Jaeger from the region of Almeria and uh, I wish you lots of luck with discovering the future of food, the future of landscape design. See you later. Ciao!